Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're anything like me, you may find yourself thinking about how best to spend the little free time that you have left on this pale blue dot. You wonder if you're squeezing the most amount of quality lemonade from the proverbial lemon of life. I suppose we can turn to the great philosophers of old and new for nuggets of wisdom on the big questions in life, like if a tree falls down and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? And modern conundrums like how can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? Nah, that one really keeps me up at night. But a bit more practical than these topics, I've spent a good amount of time wondering about what things I should spend my time on that are both enjoyable and move the needle of my life in the desired direction. Well, some years ago, I came across an idea that has served me well as a guide for choosing what things I spend my free time on day to day. And it goes like this. Everyone needs three hobbies. One to keep you creative, one to keep you in shape, and one to make you money. The thing that's so brilliant about this idea is that it succinctly captures cornerstone pillars of what I would consider a well-rounded and well-lived life. Express yourself, take care of yourself, provide for yourself. And I think there's good scientific backing for these ideas. In his 1943 paper titled A Theory of Human Motivation, Maslow published his concept of the hierarchy of needs. In it, he details a psychological model that links the needs of humans with their behavior. It's in popular use today and informs much of the health and social framework in medicine, but more relevant to today's topic, the three hobby recommendation maps really well onto Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and I think goes a long way to explaining why the advice is simple, yet so effective. As long as my time is spent on one of these things, it never feels like wasted time. So let's jump in, I'll explain how I apply this concept in my life and maybe why you should too. So welcome back peeps. My name is Michael. I'm a junior doctor training as a radiologist in London. And this is my channel where I share ideas that resonate with me in the hopes that they can add value to your life as well. The first rung on Maslow's hierarchy is the rung of physiological need. And this is why I consider the exercise hobby to be so fundamental, as having a sound body is a prerequisite to being able to experience the world and everything else it has to offer. A healthy person has a thousand wishes, a sick person only one. Staying healthy is the backbone of everything else. The benefits of staying healthy are obvious, for longevity, but also for quality of life. I don't just want to live longer in and of itself, I want to live well for longer. From a medical standpoint, I think we often overcomplicate how to achieve good health. It's simple really. Number one, have a regular exercise habit. And number two, eat healthy over the long term. When it comes to exercise, it's simple really. The cardinal rule is to move more. Whatever gets you excited to move more, do that. Or at least whatever suckiness you can tolerate for the longest, then do that. For me, this has come in the form of calisthenics, weight training, and more recently I've started boxing. And remember that exercising is not only great for cardiovascular and musculoskeletal health, but it's also a feel-good hormone powerhouse when it comes to our mental health. This is one of those hobbies which has both short and long-term effects. You'll feel good and function better in the present, but also you and your family and friends will thank you for staying in good health 50 years from now. Now, I don't know about you, but my goal is to be the living incarnation of that gif where the granddad throws away his walking sticks and just starts cutting shapes on a yacht. <laughs> so peeps, stay healthy and enjoy life more and for longer. A hobby that keeps you healthy is one that you'll never regret. Moving slightly up Maslow's hierarchy, we come to the next rung, which is safety and security, both of which are heavily dependent on having a sound financial diet. Now, money won't make you happy. Studies have repeatedly shown that in the US, around about $75,000 is the sweet spot for strong correlation between income and happiness. Increases in income over this were less strongly correlated with increases in income. That's not to say that more money doesn't make people happier. It's just that it begins to matter less to their overall state of happiness as it would lower down the earnings ladder. With that being said, it seems that no matter what you earn, anxieties regarding personal finances are overwhelmingly common, with up to 90% of households surveyed admitting that they worry about money on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, when it comes to money, most people take the traditional well-trodden path. Go to school, earn a trade or attend university, then work full time and climb the ladder or build up your own business until you finally hit retirement. And at that point, you'll be financially free. However, what if the traditional path just isn't your vibe? Or you don't want to be employed full time, but want more flexibility in your life? Or maybe you're simply just not happy with your current income? Well, this is where having a hobby that generates some side income 
i.e. a side hustle can be a game changer. Ideally, the side hustle is something that you enjoy doing, but at the same time has the potential to earn you income and possibly be scaled up in the future. Having that extra income can help you design your work-life balance to your liking or just supplement your full-time income. And overall, it just helps reduce anxiety related to money. And above simply earning extra cash, side hustles offer a chance for personal development. You can learn new businesses and life skills and you can dip your feet into other potential industries without sacrificing steady income. And who knows, if you get good enough, this could even grow to be on par with your main income. Now, I already know what you're thinking. What are my side hustles? <laughs> well... Taste a bag, don't worry about what I'm doing. But no, seriously. Uh, I got into investing uh, in the stock market and into cryptocurrency around about last year. And this year, I've also started working on some other things in the background which I may discuss in future on this channel. Stay tuned. But ultimately, the goal is to have a steady stream of passive income that meets my personal financial needs. Once I have that, then any work I do is because I want to and not because I have to. So any hobby that pushes me in that direction is one that I never regret. And that leads quite nicely into the last hobby. Once we have, you know, sound bodies and sound wallets, you can focus on more abstract things like being creative. Now, with this hobby, we jump right to the top rungs of Maslow's hierarchy. Self-esteem and self-actualization is the name of the game. I think this one particularly hits home for me because since starting medicine, and in particular since graduating med school and starting working as a full-time doctor, keeping up with creative hobbies has been a struggle. As great a career as medicine is, I think it has a way of turning creative, multifaceted people into the latest version of the, you know, government approved <laughs> Dr. Bot 3000. <laughs> The career is time consuming, it's energy intensive, it's emotionally draining. I slowly found myself drifting away from, you know, the creative hobbies I used to love so much and replacing them with low energy activities like watching trash reality TV. Not gonna lie though, 90 Day Fiance, <laughs> incredible. No one can convince me otherwise. But back on topic, I'm sure this feeling is common in other careers also. But this is a huge shame as creative hobbies are the vehicles through which we can, you know, really express our innermost selves. To engage in creative hobbies is to lean into what Maslow calls self-actualization. Self-actualization is a sense that we're living at our fullest potential and have an appreciation for the beauty within our lives. Surviving and making money are essential to living, sure. But thriving is the domain of creativity and self-actualization. And research bears this out with studies showing how minimal time dedicated to creative hobbies at any skill level really can boost well-being by promoting feelings of happiness, reducing stress, building confidence and self-esteem, increasing intelligence, and generally can help people, you know, work through anything that might be on their mind. For me over the years, this has taken various forms from musical instruments in school to photography at university. And more recently, I've started dabbling in DJing and, you know, of course, this YouTube channel. Ideally, our creative hobbies should be separate from our money-making hobbies, as making a business of a hobby can lead to you falling out of love with that hobby. We want to use our creative hobby to de-stress from the business of work and not to be weighed down by expectations of money-making. So whatever weird and wonderful hobbies you've got, just lean into it. It's never wasted time. So that's it for me on this one, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the, you know, three hobbies for life and maybe what your three hobbies for life would be. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my last videos here and here somewhere and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.